Hi, Maria. Hi, Nick. How's it going? Good. So nice to be here. To great. See all of you. Great to be here yeah. with you. It's my honor, my pleasure, and great to see a packed room. Thank you for all for joining us. Yeah. I just wanted to say that, I mean, why are we here today, you and me? It's a good question. Yeah. It's two diverse portfolios coming together with one common goal is to autonomize heavy industry, make it more efficient, safe, and profitable. And at the same time, we're also making it sustainable. And we all know that the way we're consuming today isn't sustainable. So Nick, hasn't there been any advancements I think recently? absolutely. Every single person in this room is committed to sustainability. I think we've probably heard the word 1,000 times this week through different presentations, and I promise Maria and I will only say it uh, probably 100 more today. But there's been great progress when you look at green energy, electrification, and all of us trying to make the world a better place. But despite all that, it's not enough. We're, we're still killing the earth. In my lifetime alone, we've emitted more carbon than all of mankind. And if we were just to cut our emissions in half, that's just enough to be at a sustainable rate. So I think, Maria, we need to talk about the bigger question here. Yeah, no, we do, Nick. I mean, what if we, the things we think are sustainable actually isn't sustainable? So let's look at some examples. How many here in the audience drive an electric vehicle? Well, not too many, but some of you, okay? I congratulate you because Good job. Yeah, you, you're really doing an impact when it comes to reducing fossil fuel, and that's great for the environment. But did you also know that to produce all of these batteries we need for EVs, we need to mine more metals and copper than ever before? So it's actually debatable what the net impact of the whole life cycle is. And looking at the ag industry, how many here are trying to cut down on meat? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, some actually. Well, I had a steak yesterday, so. Yeah, so good. Yeah. <laughs> but with a growing population and a huge trend towards plant-based food, we'll need to produce more crop than ever. So either we find more land or we become more efficient using the land we have. I think it's funny we're here in Las Vegas, and so this is a great example. How many of you are going to enjoy or have enjoyed a tasty beverage this week? I think I've had a couple. Yeah, yeah you, I saw you out last night. I know what you did. <laughs> no, did you know it takes 70 liters of water to produce one pint of beer? And I do know that the tab on that in Las Vegas is three times the cost of anywhere else, so that's not sustainable or profitable for us, but um, definitely interesting. And the, the one that I thought was interesting, actually growing up with smartphones and working in mining, um, I didn't know that there's over 60 metals in our phone. So if you think about that, 60 metals, that's 60 more holes in the ground somewhere in the world that we're digging deeper and deeper, that's getting harder to find, harder to access. And we continue to have new phones come out every year. So how are we gonna maintain with that? And I think getting to it, Maria, is what's the point we're trying to make here? Yeah. I mean, the point is that it's a simple equation, right? The population is increasing and it's continuing to increase. We're clearly not going to stop, uh, stop consuming beer or social media. Nope. So the demand for natural resources is just going to continue growing and growing and growing. So how do we reduce the impact on the environment? But we have to reduce the impact per unit of consumption. And that we do with disruptive technology. Absolutely. So Nick, tell me about some of the progresses we actually have made. I mean, we've come a long way with digital technologies in the last 30 years. And I think this event is always one of my most favorite events to see the new things that Hexagon's doing and partnering with our customers and how we're advancing. Sensors are capturing more data faster. We're processing in near real time. Um, analytics are giving us insights into some of these challenges and things that we've talked about. And technology has enabled the world that we all know today. And when we look at that across 
industries, we don't see this trend declining, right? We don't see consumption going down and we don't see investment going down. So all industries, everyone's in a period of uncertainty, right? Now, you know, we look at the markets and so all of us are trying to manage our costs. But every single one of us is continuing to invest in technology and we see that continue to grow. So I think what would be great, Maria, is if we just talk about a couple of great examples of what some of these people in the room are doing. Would you tell them about agriculture? Yeah. I mean, in agriculture, we're already doing great things today. With disruptive innovations, Hexagon is already helping some of the world leaders in agriculture industries to become more sustainable. So by using precision ag and perception technology, we're enabling farmers to produce more on the same amount of land, increasing crop yield, and reducing chemicals and water. And that is truly sustainable. So really what's aggressive. going on in, in mining? Mining is interesting. It has this perception of being one of the most traditional and oldest industries. It's the primary industry. But mining is further ahead in autonomy than any other. And Hexagon is by far the largest solution provider of all technology needs that we can focus on partnering with you in the room to continue to advance that and step ahead of the rest. And so I guess the question is, can we do more? Can we go faster? Is there something new and interesting, Maria? Well, we can, and we actually are today. We're partnering with some of the customers actually here today from Western Australia to make autonomy a reality. Reducing fuel consumption, reducing machine maintenance cost, addressing labor shortages, which is a huge part of this equation, and also saving lives. So I think there already is a clear return on investment if we look at the off-road industrial autonomy market. Did you know that to operate one of these long haul trucks for 24 hours, 365 days per year, it takes four drivers. And this is in an industry with a huge labor shortage. So, and the labor cost alone is one million per vehicle per year. So that's a lot of money on the table. But one more thing. Play the video. We are so proud about the formation of our partnership and what that means for you. We're bringing together our best technologies, coming in, focusing through an industry-specific use here to help solve and challenge your needs. But what this really means is that enabling autonomy at scale, making it simple, making it e easy to use, giving access to all, and pushing further ahead because we can and we need to do more. And as a team, we now are able to help serve all in this audience and continue to grow. So, but the thing we know, Maria, is me and you can't do it alone. No, I mean, we certainly can't. I mean, the reality is that we need bold leadership. We need someone to take the lead. But exactly like Adam Stelzner did. We can't do this alone. We need the whole of the industry to come together a diverse set of industry to come together to solve this challenge and disrupt and make the big change. We know that autonomy is going to play a huge part in the equation to make this world more sustainable. And this we need to do so that we can continue mining and farming on this earth for many generations to come. But maybe 
maybe in the future, we'll actually be able to mine and farm on Mars. Just maybe. Thank you all very much.